Anthropic, the company behind the cloth series of models, has come up with contextual retrieval. If we take an LLM, we all know that the LLM simply cannot answer questions that are specific to your in-house data, that is very specialist kind of data. So the simplest solution is to add your entire knowledge base. For example, if it's say 500 pages, add the entire material of 500 pages to the prompt and the LLM is now aware of your data and it can now answer questions about that data. But imagine a system where the knowledge base is really large. For example, you have thousands and thousands of pages of data, so you need to have a retrieval augmented generated system. What we do in RAG is that we chunk whatever the data we have in our knowledge base, and then we convert them into embeddings, which are mere numbers or vectors. We store these vectors in vector DB with key value pass. So that is what they are mentioning here. So we break down the knowledge base, which is the corpus of documents into smaller chunks. And then we use the embedding model to convert the chunks into vector embeddings, store these embeddings in vector database. And at runtime, whenever a user inputs a query to the model, the vector DB is used to find most relevant chunks based on semantic similarity of the query. So this is quite important. We are retrieving based on semantic similarity, but not the actual data. So what it means is that the embedding models uh, embed the data or the chunks into this embedding space. And these are like abstract representations. For example, if you're after the data about dogs, it could be quite possible that a chunk about horse could be closer to a chunk about dog. And so if you want to query the data about dog one, it's quite possible that you would get this chunk, which is about horse rather than get this chunk about dog2. Now this is a problem with the embedding models. So one of the well-known techniques, which is an older technique that assists in this situation is best match 25. And it's based on ranking function and it uses lexical matching rather than using semantic relationship. BM25 is built on top of TFIDF, which stands for term frequency inverse document frequency. In the next chapter, I'm going to dive into TFIDF and BM25. So if you're quite familiar with the basics, you could probably skip that chapter and move on to the next one. So TFIDF stands for Term Frequency Inverse Document Frequency. To understand TFIDF and hence the BM25 algorithm, let's start with the corpus which is a toy corpus with just three documents in place. If you want to calculate a term frequency, all we that we have to do is count the number of times the term occurs in that document. Let's take the example of dogs. In the first document, it occurs just once, so it's one. In the second document, it occurs three times, one, two, and three, so the count is three. And in the third document, there's no dogs, so the count is zero. So we have calculated the term frequency. Now, inverse document frequency or IDF is the log of the total documents that are there in the corpus divided by the number of documents that contain the term dogs in this case. So we have three documents here and only the first two documents contain dogs. So it's log of three by two and 0.176 is IDF. And this IDF value is for the entire corpus. It's not just for a single document. So if we multiply TF and IDF values, we arrive at the TF IDF values for each of the documents. For example, for the first document, it's one times 0.176 so we have 0.176 again there's one problem however which is that we do not consider the document length for example in the second document the number of words is 25 and it's quite a long document compared to the first and second document which have just five words and four words respectively so what we have to do is we have to normalize TFIDF by dividing by the length of the document. For example, for the first document D1, we computed TFIDF, but we divide by 5, which is the number of words in the document, and we arrive at 0 0.0352. Similarly, for the second document, we divide by 25, and we arrive at 0 0.0212. So in this case, we can notice that suddenly document one 
gets a higher value compared to document 2 meaning this will be ranked higher than the document 2. Now this is just a naive way of normalizing but we can make it much more sophisticated. What we can do is we can also include saturation. Now what is saturation? Saturation is kind of giving less weightage or value to a term as it keeps occurring more and more often in a given document. For example, in the second document, there's dogs here and then dogs comes here again and then it starts with dogs and there can be many more sentences which can keep going on starting with dogs, dogs, dogs. And so the saturation says that as the term frequency increases, we will kind of saturate it to a specific value. As the frequency increases, the weightage becomes lower and lower. But when the frequency is low, the weightage is quite high. This is the scary looking equation that is for BM25. It has the IDF, which is N by DF of T. On top of that, it also has two parameters, which is K1 and B. And typically these parameters are chosen as K1 as say one or two, and B is generally 0.75 or so. And DL is the length of the document. And DL average is the average length of the documents. So let's have a look at an example. If we go back to the same example, taking k1 as 1 and b as 0.75 the average length of the documents is 5 plus 25 plus 4 so each of the document length divided by the number of documents so we have 11.33 and the tf values is something we already pre-calculated in the previous slide and idf we calculated again previously. So plugging in all of the values in this equation, we can see that BM25 for the first document is now 0.7818 and BM25 for the second document is 0.3093 and for the third document is of course zero because we don't have the term dogs in that third document. So that's how we can go about calculating the exact match algorithm best match 25. And we can use this to retrieve chunks or retrieve documents that have the exact matching term that best matches our query. With that information about BM25, let's look at how they are using it in this contextual uh, retrieval. Let's say your knowledge base is the technical support database with all the, uh, you know, the error codes in the database and you're looking for some specific detail about the error code TS999. In this case, the best match technique suits far better compared to the abstractive way of the semantic relationship, which is using embeddings. So how we will go about solving this is we break down the uh, knowledge base corpus into smaller chunks, of course, and we create TF-IDF encoding. And we also use BM25 to find top chunks based on exact matches. I think if we look at the uh, picture, it'll be much clearer. So if we have the corpus, we chunk it, and we also embed it and store it in the vector DB. And we also use TF-IDF and we use the encodings and we also store them and this becomes our pre-processing. Whenever we get a query from the user, we not only check this vector DB, but we also check the TF-IDF index and the combination of both of them are used in rank fusion and the top K chunk is chosen based on the fused data and the generative model is fed with the chunks. And this is a slightly more sophisticated rack compared to the naive rack where you don't have this route and you just go from the corpus to embedding model to vector db and then go straight to the generative model. Even with this approach, the problem seemed to be that the rack system have significant limitation, which is that they destroy the context. So how do we solve this context conundrum in traditional racks? Let's take the example where the user asks the query, what was the revenue growth of ACME Corp in Q2 2023? Now, the related chunk that is retrieved from the DB could be the company's revenue grew by 3% over the previous quarter. But now the question is, was it the quarter of 2023 or was it the quarter of 2020 or 22? We don't know. 
So the system doesn't have the context of the question basically, or in other words, it fails to provide the context. And this is where they are introducing contextual retrieval. In contextual retrieval, the original chunk is the company's revenue grew by 3% over the previous quarter is the same answer that we got as before. But now there is contextualized chunk. So the contextualized chunk says this chunk is from the from an SEC filing on ACME Corp's performance in Q2 2023. The previous quarter's revenue was for 314 million and the company's revenue grew by 3% over the previous quarter. There we have the essential detail which is q2 2023 so that's the context and now we know that the revenue grew by three uh, percent over the previous quarter makes sense because it's now given the right context so how do they implement this contextual retrieval it seems that we'll have to involve llm model for that the llm model that they are using is the cloud model itself to implement contextual retrieval they turn to cloud again what does that mean so they have written a prompt that instructs the model to provide chunk specific context this is the prompt that they have written so they provide the whole document and they say that here's the chunk we want to situate within the whole document and they provide the chunk and they're asking a short succinct context to situate this chunk within the overall document for the purpose of improving the search retrieval. So basically you are creating a prompt which actually asks to provide a context for a given chunk. So you're basically solving the problem using another LLM and the resulting context is usually 50 to 100 tokens and it is prepended to the chunk before it's embedded and before creating the PM25 index. So let's have a look at the figure they have given. So you have the corpus and these are the different chunks that you've got and you run these chunks through the LLM using this prompt template and you run these different chunks and you ask the LLM to provide the context. You get the context and you append the chunk along with the context and you pass the context and the chunk to the embedding model and your tf idf you create your embedding vectors which are stored in the vector db and you also have your tf idf index and that is your pre-processing step with that they're saying the performance improvements and their experiments show that contextual embedding reduces the top 20 chunk retrieval failures by 35 percent and combining contextual embeddings and contextual bm25 reduces the top 25 chunk retrieval failure by as much as 49%. So this is the file retrieval rate with embedding model, which is naive, but when you combine it along with BM25, you reduce it to 5% and that is your standard retrieval. Now the era of contextual retrieval where you have contextual embeddings and contextual embeddings along with contextual BM25 reduces it and takes it all the way to 2.9. To add to that, they've also given some implementation considerations. First is the uh, chunk boundaries. We should always split in a sensible way. The choice of chunking size, chunking boundary and chunk overlap, everything seems to affect the performance as with any other rack system. It's nothing special here. And the embedding model, they have mentioned that they try different embedding models and different embedding models give different results. And they are saying that Gemini and Voyage embeddings ought to be particularly effective. Custom contextualized prompt. So they are saying that the prompt that they have given here is just a kind of a initial template and we are welcome to sort of play around with the prompt and we can customize the prompt in order to get the best results and number of chunks again we may be tempted to think that the more the number of chunks that we provide you know the, the better the context and all that but they're saying that more information can be distracting and they have tried using 5 10 20 chunks and the sweet spot seems to be that of 20 chunks where the performance is the best now to further boost the performance they're talking of a system where you really have too many chunks uh, that are getting retrieved we can combine contextual chunks with another technique to give even more improvement in performance so with large knowledge bases the initial retrieved chunk there's a lot of chunk that gets retrieved 
and sometimes even hundreds. And so re-ranking is a commonly used filtering technique to ensure that the most relevant chunks are passed to the model. And re-ranking provides better responses and reduces cost and latency because the model is processing less information. So now the step involves re-ranking along with the rank fusion. So the steps are like we perform the initial retrieval and we pass the end chunks along with the user query through the re-ranking model. And using the re-ranking model, we give each chunk a score based on its relevance or the importance. And then we select the top K chunks and usually 20. And this is the uh, sort of combined figure that they're showing. So we do the pre-processing, we have the, the user query coming in during the runtime, we do the rank fusion, and after that we choose the top end chunks, and we actually do the re-ranking and we choose the top K chunks, which usually seems to be 20 chunks, and we pass those to the generative model. So with that, they are saying that the performance seems to improve a bit more. For example, with the standard retrieval, the embedding model plus BM25, they have now included re-rank and failure rate seems to have gone down from 5% to 3.5%. And with the contextual retrieval, if we include the re-ranking, then it seems to have gone down from 2.9 to 1.9. So that's again further improvement in performance. So to conclude, they ran a large number of tests comparing different combinations of all techniques described above and used BM25, contextual retrieval, re-ranking, and total top K uh, results retrieved across all variety of different data types. So this is what their findings are. So embeddings plus BM25 is better than embeddings on their own. So it's always better to have an information retrieval algorithm combined with embeddings. And then they're saying that Voyage and Gemini are the best embedding models in this case. And passing the top 20 chunks to the model is more effective than the top 5 or top 10 chunks. Adding context to chunk improves retrieval accuracy a lot and re-ranking is better than no re-ranking and all these benefits stack up and to maximize the performance improvements we can combine contextual embeddings from Voyage or Gemini with contextual BM25 plus re-ranking step and adding the 20 chunks to the prompt. So this is your uh, go-to approach basically that they have summarized in the end you need to have the uh, TF idea for the uh, re-ranking. You need to have both the embedding model along with some kind of a retrieval that's going on. And then you also need to have re-ranking and you also need to do top K chunks from the re-ranking. And this K is typically 20 and all of that gets fed to the generative model. Not to forget that this prompt template that they have given is just a basic one and we can always improve that to get the most out of the uh, data that we have got. And with that, uh, pretty much I've said whatever I wanted to say about contextual retrieval. I hope that's useful in improving your rack system and I really look forward to your comments about how you have implemented it or how you are planning to implement it and I will see you in my next video. Until then, take care.